seen uh, a, a comment on YouTube about one of my presentations um, regarding CBD, uh, well, Rule 10, Rule 9, avoid impeding. It's not the easiest thing. And uh, so I thought I'd just try and make just a quick video just to explain what, what the situation was. For instance, if you were a PD vessel and you're following a traffic separation scheme and you encounter a sailing vessel uh, who's approaching you on to a close quarter situation or even a risk of collision on your port side, um, the PD vessel is bound by uh, Rule 18, the responsibilities between vessels, powder and vessels shall keep way to sail. However, in a traffic separation scheme, there is another caveat in that rule. Um, so that's in Rule 9 and Rule 10. In Rule 10, in the traffic separation scheme, it says that the sailing vessel shall not uh, impede the safe passage of a vessel that's following the lane. I could go on and talk about uh, Rule 10, saying that you should follow the lane, um, you should keep clear of the separation line and the separation zones, uh, you should avoid crossing a traffic separation scheme unless you're obliged to do so. So in all those particular situations, a traffic separation scheme is, with the criteria, uh, a navigational hazardous area. It's been produced to, produce, to, to provide safe passage of vessels through that area. Uh, so what happens then is that the sailing vessel shall avoid impeding. Now, it's important to differentiate between um, what do you mean by keep clear and give way, Rule 16, or stand on, Rule 17. So keep clear, in my opinion, is you should adjust your course and or your speed to provide a safe passing distance when indicated to, to keep clear. That's on your port side. Uh, I'm sorry, a vessel on your starboard side, you would keep clear in a crossing situation. If you were overtaking, you would keep clear again, yet again. Stand on. Well, stand on says that you should maintain your course and speed with caution because you'd expect the other vessel uh, to take action. Avoid impeding. Well, that's different again. Normally, what I try and say is avoid impeding is a change of responsibility for the stand on vessel where she shall, if the circumstances of the case admit, yeah, take early action to allow sufficient sea room, even if there is a risk of collision and to be aware of the other rules in this part, i.e. 17. Ha. An analogy might well be. Say, for instance, you're coming up to some traffic lights. You're on green, but coming round on the port side, you see a fire engine coming up. Na, 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 na. And so what's happened is that you're going to meet or get very close. Probably what you would do is that you would slow down or stop or take whatever action is necessary to allow a safe passage of that vessel to go through, the fire engine to go through. Alternatively, <laughs> you might well be uh, going down the road and you hear and see in your mirror the police car or an ambulance coming up behind. Well, provided it's not for you, the police car. Um, you pull over and let them through if it was safe for you to do so. In those cases, each time I was the stand on vessel, I had not necessarily the right of way, we don't want to use that, but I should have maintained my course and speed. And the other vessels were in the situation where they were approaching, they would have been keep clear, or if they were crossing powder and vessel from the port side, then they would have been also uh, a stop and let me through. Okay. What else can we say? Well, let's look at what a CBD does. Rule 18 tells us that a vessel other than NUC or REM shall avoid impeding the passage of a vessel that's constrained by draft, provided the circumstances of the case are met. So, put us into a traffic separation scheme. And here we have a CBD passing on our port side. We are the stand on vessel because it's two power drivers meeting, Rule 15. 
But there's a change of responsibility here where 18 says I should avoid impeding. So if it's safe for me to do so, then what I should do is take whatever action is necessary so as to provide sufficient sea room for the other vessel. What would that be? Well, probably safe speed says that I should be traveling at a safe speed where I can take proper and effective action. Or if I can't, then it will be a mixture of reduction of speed and, and an alteration of course to starboard if I, if I can. Each of these situations, though, have identified, as in 8F part 3, says that if there is a risk of collision, the vessel is, not, is still fully obliged by the action of the rule. So she, she is still obligated to be the give way vessel. Five minutes. OK, very quickly. Then if I was on the CBD and I was crossing, I should have had due consideration for myself. But nevertheless, this is what the rule says. It says that if I see a vessel on my starboard side, she shall, uh, she shall avoid impeding my passage if it was safe for her to do so. So I should maintain my course and speed with caution, being aware of the situation and monitor my speed, monitor this vessel. If it becomes apparent now that she's not going to take action, I need to clear the situation by sending five short and rapid blasts, effectively saying, hey, are you going to slow down and let me through or are you not? If she doesn't take action straight away, I am the give way vessel and I would have to take action. OK. By whatever means, yeah, continually blowing your whistle and doing all sorts of stuff. But nevertheless, that's that's what I've got to do. Anyway, I hope that sort of sorts it out. And uh, um, thanks very much indeed. OK, cheers. Bye.